come into this place, we come to receive the teaching and the preaching. But when we leave this place, we go out there doing the teaching and the preaching. Right. Amen. Right. So we need to well equip ourselves with the word of God so we'll know what we're talking right. about. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen. Amen walls. Amen. Amen. A lot of people want to come and worship, but they don't want to come and be taught the word of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now I'm not I'm not rebuking anybody or fussing. I'm just saying, if you love the Lord, come receive his word. Because he has a calling on each and every one of our lives. And that calling is, is go and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Go and tell somebody how he died on the cross for their sins. Go and tell somebody if they repent of their sins and come to faith in Christ, they will be reconciled to God. You see, money can't buy that, but salvation is a free gift. Salvation is a free gift that you can't put a money value on. And people need to know that. And most of all, people need to know that in their own household. So start that. Amen? Start that. Then go out into the fields and the grocery stores, get the bushes, get the bush, and let somebody know about the goodness of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now, if you will, turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 5. And as everyone stands, I'm going to ask our wife to lead us in song. Our, 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 our sister Lee, just, sister Lee jumped up like she wanna lead us in song. You said stay. Amen. So as He loves us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. You see, I'm saying all this to say, if you ever doubted 
that you disappoint God, don't worry about it because God's got you. He's got you. And he's got you because he loves you. And you know, and God says, you know, we can't drag, the man can't put a, his hand on a plow looking back. We got to keep moving forward and keeping our eyes stay on Jesus. You see, because of his love, there's a lot of benefits to it. You see, it's something you can't buy. It's something you can't earn. And it's not a reward. It's something that God gives to us. And it led me to this scripture. It led me to Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. So if you doubt in yourself, if you keep, if Satan keeps on bringing your past up to you, go to this. Therefore, being justified by faith. Therefore, by you being a Christian justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing the tribulations work in patience, and patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades away. But the word of God will last forever. I want to preach on the topic that we have something to shout about. Or something to shout about. And I believe all things, I believe that all the things that's going on in this world, there's not a lot to shout about as believers. But as believers, we do have something to shout about. You see, we can shout about how God has been good to us, about how God has made a way for us, how God is bringing us peace to our troubled soul, yes. but how God, by being, He's with us in times of uncertainty. We can shout about that sin is no longer charged to our account, and we are at peace with God. And oh yes, my brothers and sisters, God is good, and all the time, God is good. Amen. And in the book of Romans, Paul spent a considerable amount of time detailing man's need for salvation. Mm -hmm. In this book, it talks about something we should all know. Right. That man and woman is a sinner. Yes. And he or she abides under the wrath of God. But we also know that nothing associated with religion, mm -hmm. works, the law, traditions, rituals, or being good can ever provide salvation. As children of God, we're totally dependent upon faith in Jesus Christ yes. to bring us into a right relationship with God. Yes. You see, it all comes down to realizing that, it's, that it is not what we do that makes the difference. It's all about who we know yes. and put our faith and trust in. Yes. Right. And with this truth firmly nailed down, Paul now moves forward in the discussion of the doctrine of salvation. Paul begins to tell his readers the benefits of being saved by grace through faith. In these first five verses of chapter 5, Paul tells us why we have something to shout about in our salvation. All right. And I want to show you why every child of God has something to shout about. Uh -huh. And as the Lord gives me liberty, mm -hmm. I would like to point out a few reasons why we have something to shout about. Uh -huh. And the first one is, we have something to shout about because of our position as believers. Uh -huh. Notice what verse 1 says about our position. You see, a lot of people come through life wanting to have disposition on the job, want to be over people in the schools, or whatever the case may be. They fight over power and positions in this world. But there's no better position than what the child of God has. Because verse 1 says that, therefore being justified by faith. 
Now who justifies us? God himself. The God who created heaven and earth. The God who created the animals and the food that we eat. The God who creates everything we, when we look outside or even look in the ear, created. And his son has power in all the heaven and earth in his hands. That's who justifies us. That's where our position lies within Jesus Christ. So Paul says that we who believe have been justified. Now this is a word that many do not fully understand. Basically it means to count someone righteous. It also means to reckon, to account, to judge, to treat, or to look upon as righteous. It does not mean to make righteous, but it means that we are treated like we are righteous. Y'all get that? You see, we're all once unrighteous and wicked sinners. But now God treats us as though we are are as righteous and as pure as he himself is. Right now. And some may ask, how is this possible, or how does it happen? Mm -hmm. Well, it happened at the cross where Jesus paid for all the sins of the world. All right now. And if anyone has received him by faith as Lord and Savior, God gives us the righteousness of Christ. Yeah. Not that we are righteous, yeah. because our righteousness is just as filthy rags. Right. But when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, God sees us as righteous. Make your oh, y'all still don't get it. Come on now. Let me say, justification does not mean that we are perfect. Right. It just means that God sees us as who we are. Yes. Uh -huh. And let me put it this way. Imagine a man on trial for murder. Mm -hmm. The persecution knows he's guilty. Mm -hmm. The man who committed the murder knows he's guilty. Uh -huh. And even the judge knows he's guilty. Mm -hmm. But the jury finds him not guilty. All right. And even though nearly everyone in the courtroom knows the man is guilty of murder, mm -hmm. he is treated like an innocent person because he has been declared innocent. Mm -hmm. Likewise, when you and I stand before God, mm -hmm. we know we are guilty. Mm -hmm. Satan and his aunts know we are guilty. Mm -hmm. And God knows we are guilty. Mm -hmm. However, because we have come to faith in Jesus Christ, yes. God treats us as though we are innocent because he has justified us. Yes, yes. And if you still don't get it, Come on now. the moment you came to faith in Jesus, the slate was wiped clean. All right now. Your sins were thrown as far as the east is from the west. And you have been declared not guilty of all past crimes against God. Oh, say amen. Amen. And how did this miraculous and fantastic justification come about in your life and minds? Right. By faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can't work for it. All right. You can't earn it. All right. You can't solicit somebody to give it to you. Right. You can't ask somebody for a faith. Right. All it requires is faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, we didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. All we did was take God at his word. Concerning the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ, and God justified us by faith. So don't go pat yourself on the back. Don't go tell on the mountain, look what I have done. You have not done anything. Jesus Christ done it all. And it just required you to come to faith in him. And I'm grateful this morning that salvation is the product of faith alone and not man's opinion. All right, man. See, if it relied on my ability to perform, I would be lost. Yes. If it required me to keep a list of rules perfectly, I would be lost. Yes. If it required me to be a good person, I most definitely would be lost. Hallelujah. But thank God it's all about thank faith. You. Thank you. It ain't about works. It ain't about what I've done. It's not about what I'm going to do. It's all about my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> so we have something to shout about because of our position as believers. Yes, and we also have something to shout about because of our possessions as believers. And the latter part of verse 1 through verse 2, Paul lists for us some of the benefits. Who I love calling the benefits. Yeah. See, these benefits are better than Blue Cross Blue Shield. These benefits are better than the 401k. These benefits are better than your pension. 
Amen. 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 Because these benefits are of our, of our justification. Yes. Because we are considered righteous by the Lord. There are certain things that belong to us this morning. Yes. The first is we possess yes. acceptance. Right. According to Paul, salvation brings with it peace with God. Mm -hmm. You see, when we was out there in the streets doing our thing, when we was out in the streets doing our dirt, when we was going from one house to another, when we was living simple lives, lives, we were enemies of God. Yes. Was, yes. We had, it was enmity between us right. and God. Yes. But salvation brings with it peace with God. Amen. And this is a truth that can hardly be understood by our mortal minds. You see, every lost person in this room, in the past, was the enemy of God. Right. According to Romans chapter 8, right. verses 7 through 8. Yes. But the good news is, <clears throat> when that lost person <laughs> turns to Jesus Christ by faith, God declares an end to the hostility yes. and declares peace with us. Yes. He then brings that person into a right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. When Jesus is trusted by faith, that person enjoys immediate peace with God. Mm -hmm. And this means that God's wrath is now turned away from us. Yes. It, this means that heaven is satisfied and all enemies have been reconciled. Yes. Right. Come on, somebody. See, there's an expression that we, we've heard it before. There's an expression that says, making peace with God. There was an old saint who was dying. He was visited by a friend who asked him, have you made your peace with God? And this man replied, no, I have not. The friend said, you must make peace with God. And this man said, I'm sorry, I cannot do that. And his friend said, but you must. Don't you know that it is dangerous to die without making peace with God? Mm -hmm. And to this, the dying man said, but how can I make peace with God when my Lord made peace with me almost 2,000 years ago? All right. All right. When he died on the cross for me. Right. And because of that, I have had peace ever since. Yeah. <clears throat> This man understood the truth of Colossians chapter 1, verse 20, where it says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. You see, we don't make peace with God. He made peace with us at the cross. Oh, come on, somebody. You see, what I'm trying to tell you, my brothers and sisters, God just wants us to be found faithful. Yes. There ain't no work that you got to put into it because Jesus has already done the work yes. when he died on the cross. Mm -hmm. He just asks us to be faithful and obedient to the things of God. Amen. Now, we must accept that, accept that, and when we do, we are given peace with God. And this is the first permanent blessing or benefit that every child of God receives at the very instant of salvation. We're accepted by God, and we are at peace with God. The second thing we possess is access. Verse 2 teaches us that the, the, that truth through Jesus Christ, we have direct access to God himself. Amen. And the word access in, in this verse means to enter the presence of the king. Okay. And through Jesus, we have the right to enter into the very presence of God, of the God of heaven, without fear. We have access to the Heavenly Father. You see, in the temple, the Gentiles were restricted to the outer court of the temple. And if they went in any further, they were executed. Women were restricted to the court of women, and then there was the holy place, where only the priests could minister. Yes. And beyond this, there was the holy of holies. <laughs> only the high priest was permitted to enter this room, but only once a year on the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. And he could not enter without the blood of an innocent sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You see, the message is very clear. Keep your distance. But Paul's message is that through Jesus, we have full access yes. to the Father in heaven. Let me see if I can get you to understand this. 
You see, I don't have to go to any priest to ask for forgiveness. Yes, yes. I don't have to go to anybody for godly advice. Yes. I don't have to ask people to go to God on my behalf in prayer. Yes. I don't need people to talk to God for me. I can talk to God myself. I can go straight to God myself. And why? Because Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Yes. And if he's my Lord and Savior, God the Father is my Heavenly Father. Now. I don't need a priest. I don't need any talk to God for me, yeah. I can talk to him myself. Yeah. I ain't got to count the beads. I ain't got to do none of that. I can go to God myself. Yeah. And the third thing we possess is assurance. Mm -hmm. Not only is there peace with God and access into God's presence, but the believer also enjoys blessed, deep, settled assurance of salvation. Now, the salvation we have, the salvation, the assurance that we have is twofold. The first one is that we have assurance right now here on earth. Notice the phrase in verse 2. Grace in which we now stand. Yes. Amen. That sounds like present, right? Amen. And the word stand carries the idea of holding your ground, of being firmly fixed and immovable. Basically, this verse teaches us that we are absolutely secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, this verse is all about our eternal security as believers right now. You see, the eternal security of the believers is a doctrine that many do not hold to this form. Many, many people believe that a person can be saved right today and then lost tomorrow. And somehow, they got to go get saved all over again. Yes, yes. These folks laugh at us Bible believers who affirm the security of the believers. Mm -hmm. And one of the main problems they express is many use the eternal security of the believer as a license to commit sin. Mm -hmm. However, the person who lives such a life neither understands eternal security nor does he or she understand salvation. Mm -hmm. Our security in Christ leads the leads the genuine believer to live a clean and holy life. Yes. And let me say, we're not perfect, but we're striving to be perfect. Amen. Amen. We're not, we don't know how to practice sin, but do we start with the sin on occasion? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But we live our life with Jesus Amen. and not the things of this world. You see, a life of gratitude to the one who paid the ultimate price to provide salvation in the first place. And according to verse 1, we are saved or justified by faith. Yes. That is, we did not earn it, we didn't buy it, and we didn't get it as a reward. Yes. Salvation was given as a free gift from God. And if that is true, then verse 2 says that we stand firmly uh, fixed by grace. In other words, it was faith that saved us, and it is grace that's going to keep us. Yes, yes. To say that we are saved by trusting Jesus, and then after that we must keep ourselves saved, is totally a contradiction. Amen. Amen. If I can keep myself saved, mm -hmm. why don't I just go ahead and do the whole job myself? Yes, yes. The answer is, the answer is I can't do it. <laughs> I was saved by grace through faith, and I am kept by grace. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. That's a benefit. Yes, 401k yes. can't pay for that. Come on now, right now. It's all God all the way. Yes. And Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 34 tells us that the highest court, the highest court, not the Supreme Court. Right. I'm talking about the heavenly court. Yeah. In the universe has declared the believer to be justified. That's right. And some may ask, where is the court that can overturn that verdict? Oh boy, oh boy. Right right. There's always someone. Who wants to ask, what if this or what if that? Right now. Well, regardless, regardless of the if, the child of God is still secured in Jesus. Amen. Once saved, always saved. Right. Yes. These what if people will ask questions like, Amen. what if I lose faith in God? Well, I will tell them, my Bible says in 2 Timothy, Chapter 2, verse 13. If we are faithless, yeah. 
He will remain faithful. Come on now. For he, that's God himself, uh, right cannot disown himself. Come on now. Come on now. Then they will ask, what if I cannot hold out? Mm -hmm. Well, first, well, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, being confident of this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he, that's God again, yeah. who began a good work in you, yeah, will right. carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. Which means until Jesus yeah. comes back to get us. That's right. That's right. Then they will ask, what if I sin after I am saved? Right. Well, first John chapter one, on verse nine says, if we confess our sins, yes. he, that's being God again, Come on now. Faithful. is faithful yes. and just to forgive us our sins okay. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Then they will say, what if you're wrong about once saved, always saved? Hmm. Come on now. And I will tell them that my Lord is saved. All right. Yes. Said in John chapter 6, yeah, right now. verse 37, all that the Father gives me uh -huh. will come to me. Yeah, right. And yeah. whoever or whosoever yeah. comes to me, yeah. I will never drive away. Come on, man. Hallelujah. And let me say this. I have some what if questions myself. Yeah. Uh -huh. What if we stop looking for a reason not to believe? And just start taking the Lord at his word. Yes. All right. What if we just believe that the same God who was powerful enough to save our old wicked self yes. is able to keep us? Yes. What if we just let eternal mean eternal? Yes. What if we just let everlasting mean everlasting? All right. What if we just rejoice in salvation that we have in him and rest in the blessed assurance that is ours by faith? Yes. What if? We just stop looking for a reason to doubt God and just take God at his word. Yeah. The bottom line is this, that you can have absolute assurance if you just have faith. Not only do we have assurance right now here on planet Earth, but we also have assurance in the hereafter. Just as sure as we can know and believe that we're saved and secure in this life, mm -hmm. so too we can have the same assurance beyond this life. All right, now. See, we're pilgrims and strangers here, if y'all didn't know. Yes. Yes. This yes. is not our home. Come on now. now, eternal security extends beyond the grave. Mm -hmm. And from these verses, it is plain to see that our security has already been planned by God. That is why we can say this morning that we are as sure of heaven as if we are already there. Yes, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, we are already there because we're in Christ, who's right. now sitting All at the right, right hand of the Father. Right. So we have something to shout about in our position as <coughs> believers. We have something to shout about in our possessions as believers. And my final point is, we have also have something to shout about and our privileges yes. as believers. Amen. Amen. You see, we are saved and we are secure. But well, right now, we live in a world of trials and tribulations. And I don't know about y'all, I need Jesus every day. Amen. I need him in the morning, Amen. I need him in the noonday, I need him in the evening, and I need him in the midnight hour. And there's great privileges we have in these times that belongs to us, yes. which is the ability to rejoice in trouble. Paul says that the Christian can rejoice in the bad times of life. Yes. And let me ask you, who wants to rejoice when you're going through what you're going through? Mm. But how, why can't we rejoice? Because of the little word no. Mm. When the trials of life, yes. the sins upon us, the true believer knows that God is working his will in our lives yeah. and is attempting to produce in us a state of Christ-likeness. God is trying to make us like Jesus. And the word tribulation, here we go, y'all. And the word tribulation means pressure. Yes. And there are certain times when this life will exert pressure on the child of God. However, the mature Christian also knows that it takes pressure to produce Christ-likeness. Mm -hmm. 
You see pressure, check it out y'all, is the process used to turn coal into dust. Y'all get that? Pressure is the process used to turn coal into dust. And it is the pressure in the life of the believer that forces out more of the old sinful nature and reveals more of the image of God in us. You see, we can rejoice in trouble if we will remember that every trial is a blessing from the very hand of God. God will produce in us more of the image of Jesus Christ. When we have been chosen to suffer for him, Notice what I said, suffer for him. Sometimes we get in our own way and God has to chastise us. But here, when you're standing up for God, when you're doing what God has called you to do, you're going to run into some trouble. Because not everybody want to hear what you got to say and not everybody believe in Jesus. Everybody want to say, well, this one officer said this and this person said that. They believe with their eyes and not with their hearts. Come on, somebody. So you're going to stumble into some people that ain't going to receive what you got to say. You're going to run across the people who's going to try to stop what you're doing. But you just keep on keeping on. Because whatever you go through, God is right there with you. And let me say, God is merely helping us during those times to become more like Jesus. And with that in mind, it's easier to endure the difficult days we have that will come to us. Because there is a song that we have more good days than we do bad days. We also have the ability to recognize our troubles. In verses 3 through 5, Paul tells us all about the benefits of the ride from the pressures of life. Note the progression, note the progression mentioned in these verses, 3 through 5. It goes from tribulation to pressure. Pressure to patience, patience to endurance, endurance to experience, experience to proven character, proven character to maturity, and maturity to hope, and hope to the confident expectation that we will not be disappointed. Basically what Paul is saying is that the troubles come our way. As a result of our walk with the Lord, we learn to endure, and through endurance, we are mature. And improving character, improve it in our character. Then as we see God sustain us in the difficult times, we can rest in the deep, settled knowledge that God is in control, and he will see us through. Children of God, the more we endure for Jesus, the more we become like Jesus. You can mark this down. The road to maturity is paved with struggle. Yes, right. yes. The road to maturity is paved with struggle. Mm -hmm. If you look at Joseph, he will point you to an Egyptian prison. If you look at Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they will point you to a fiery furnace. If you look at Daniel, he will point you to a, a den of lions. Ask any believer who has traveled far with Jesus, and he or she will tell you that God's blessings are poured from a bitter cup. Amen. Amen. And we have the ability to rest in our troubles. Yes. Who can rest in their troubles? Yes. If life is to be difficult, there is to be trouble in our life, then how can we rejoice and how can we rest? Yes. Well, Paul tells us in verse 5 that the love of God, yes. like a vast river, is constantly being poured out in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You see, when we were saved, God placed His Spirit into us. Yes. The Holy Spirit is like a funnel through which streams of vast quantities of the great love of God is poured into us. Oh, that ought to give you something to shout about. In spite of your sin, in spite of your wicked, nasty sin, in spite of the things you did yesterday, today, or you're going to do tomorrow, God still pours out His love into you. And as we go through this life, there will be difficult days. Yeah. As we face all the things that will come our way, yeah. we always have the precious Holy Spirit yeah. in us to guide us, to teach us, to lead us, and to constantly remind us of the awesome love of God for His children. Yeah. You see, the Holy Spirit makes the trip bearable. Yeah. 
He makes the destination believable. Yeah. And all we have to do is rest in Him. Yes. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm going to leave you a confidant. Oh, yeah. right. And we need to submit to that confidant. Right. Yeah. We need to yeah. be obedient to that confidant. Make your point. Because He has the power to keep our hearts in perfect yeah. peace. Yeah. Yeah. Whose yeah. mind is stayed yeah. on yeah. Jesus. Yeah. You see, yeah. saints, yeah. when God justified us, uh -huh. don't miss this. When God justified us, He placed us in protected care. Yes, oh, yeah. I'm in the witness protection program. Yeah. Yeah. God got me up in my backside and my front side and both my side. He, I'm in His protected yes. protection. Yes. You see, saints, when the enemy tells you you can't, God will step in and say you can't. Yes. Yes. When life begins to toss you to and fro, yeah. Jesus will step in and tell you I'm the way, yeah. I'm the truth, and yeah. when you are overburdened, yeah. Jesus will step in and be your what? Burden bearer. Yeah. When it appears always lost, yeah. God will step in yeah. and make a way for you. Yeah. I am proclaiming yeah. everything God has done in my life, and I'm telling it to Let's be honest about who kept us. Let's be honest who delivered us, who saved us, who freed us, and who justified us. And some of you should be praising and lifting up his name right there. Because if it wasn't for the Lord that was on my side, if it wasn't for the Lord that was on my side, just go back and look at your life. It was not the doctor. It was not the lawyer. It was not the judge. Out of his hand, and whom the Father has given him. 
There is help in Jesus if you will come. Maybe you've been going through some trials and tribulations of life. And they have just got, may have gotten the better of you. If there are needs, and if the Lord is speaking to your heart, please come. The doors of the church are open. Whatever the needs are, God is here for you. Please come.